expenses must be must be both ordinary and necessary. Ordinary, it is common and accepted on your trade of business. Okay, necessary expense is one that is helpful and appropriate for your business. Okay, we got a lot of uh, cost of goods sold, fixed and variable cost, uh, depending on your industry. We got some indirect expenses, you know, like car, home office. Um, I think in 2020, our home office might be even bigger than our car expenses. Uh, we will spend more time in our home office that, uh, than on our cars. But uh, just keep track of that. Uh, keep track of those expenses. In the case of the home office, um, for, for, for small businesses, you have to, the, the basic rules on IRS says that it has to be exclusively for business, okay? So, and it's proportionate, same, the, the, same one, the same way as your car. So, uh, in order to calculate something in proportion to your home, you have to use your square footage. How much of a square footage is your office? How much are you using exclusively for your office? Um, so you can uh, use that that information to calculate your your actual expenses. Car, it uh, it is the same way. How do we measure the proportion of the car? Uh, it is based on mileage. So you have to differentiate between what is personal mileage compared to business mileage. That way we can use numbers. Everything is based on numbers. Everything is based on rules. Based, based on the number that is business mileage and personal mileage, you can proportion your expenses and, uh, and take the deductions. Um, and I always tell um, small business owners, think about if you would reimburse the expense, you know, um, can business licenses fees and LLC filings be tax deductible? Yes, they are. Um, it was necessary to, Nevada uh, didn't wanna open the, the LLC for free. So it was necessary uh, and it's normal to open that LLC uh, and you have to pay the fees. Um, right now, a lot of people are using PO boxes as well for your LLCs if you don't wanna um, have the addresses on your home. Those are really necessary and normal expenses. But um, think about the, let's say, let's uh, put yourself in somebody else's shoes. You know, if I am your employee and, uh, and you are my boss, okay? So if I come up with a receipt for Walmart, you know, for a hundred bucks and you see some items that are not business related, you're not gonna reimburse me for that money. So try to think it in the same logic. Uh, look at your LLC as somebody, uh, it is a separate entity. So uh, try to wear different hats when you talk about expenses. Um, if, uh, if I come up with a reimbursement about mileage, you know what boss, I, I was driving a lot. I need a reimbursement for my gas for about, you know, uh, $80 for gas on my car because I was doing businesses. You're gonna ask me, come on, what's your, what's your mileage log? You know, who did you visit? Where did you go? Um, you know, I, I, I saw some Facebook posts that you were in California last week. So uh, what, what was the, act, the actual um, purpose? Clients, what was the intent? What was the benefit for my business so I can reimburse you that mileage, uh, that mileage record? When we are the only business, uh, we are the owner and the only employee in the business, sometimes it's just difficult to pay that uh, that role, okay? But uh, the IRS is pretty clear with the, sometimes, but it's pretty clear with the rules that it has been necessary and ordinary. So don't, don't try to, uh, don't try to go walk into the dark side. Sometimes I say, uh, just keep things clean get the numbers organized. If it was the purpose for the business, yes, you have the right to deduct it and, and do so. Um, 
Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, uh, we have a question about uh, can one office be used by two different people who use the office for a separate businesses from the same home? We are not married and file separately. It's going to be proportionate. Think about like rent, you know, uh, if you're sharing the office with somebody else, um, you're going to not pay the full rent, right? You're going to share the rent. So the same way. Uh, you cannot deduct the whole rent for yourself because somebody else paid half of that rent. So if you think about it, you will find the answers. Um, taxes might be confusing sometimes, but there's some logic behind that. There's always some logic behind the, the rules sometimes. I'm not saying always. Okay. So, um, Try, try to think about, try to wear the, you know, shoes of the person deducting and, and the person um, making making the payment. Uh, maybe you can find some, uh, some logic and make things easier on yourself when deducting and collecting the expenses. Uh, what is deductible in my business? Okay, some business expenses are not 100% deductible. Okay, so... Um, Entertainment expenses are not deductible for 2020. We didn't go out, so <laughs> there's no <laughs> there's no loss there. <laughs> we're okay. Mirrors were only 50%. Uh, interesting that uh, there's a new rule that for 2021 is going to be 100% deductible. Uh, I think uh, this is kind of uh, to 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 incentive people go out and have business dinners, business, uh, business, business meals, you know. Um, so, for example, the, um, I got um, an invitation the other day from, uh, from the Urban Chamber of Commerce. Uh, there was the networking event. So what happened is uh, you can just register and uh, they send you your food to your home and uh, they're going to be able to deduct that meal. I mean, it was for the purpose of having a meeting, a networking meeting, and uh, they were delivered the food uh, to the to all the participants, and uh, it is going to be deductible. Um, some um, some businesses are doing that, you know, maybe uh, maybe a little gift certificate. Hey, here's um, some coffee. So you can use it whenever we have a meeting or whenever we're meeting, um, you know, things like that. You can mix it up the expenses with a little bit of a marketing strategy and that can work out uh, very well sometimes. So professional clothes, um, not too many, everybody's in pajamas. I guess if you put the, your logo in the pajamas would be a pajamas deductible. I think, I think we can test that idea, but, uh, Professional clothes, uh, they have to be adequate for the personal use, okay? So logo and functionality requirements. It has to be functional for the business. It has to represent the business. Otherwise, just a regular shirt and tie, it, it is not deductible. Believe me, if I could, I would deduct it, but um, I know better, so I don't. Um, one interesting thing is that uh, how much are you actually saving, you know? Because all these deductions that we talk about, it is for saving taxes. Let me back up a little bit. Do not spend money only because it's going to save you in taxes. Okay, that's not a good business decision. Maybe if it's worth it to buy a machinery and you need some equipment and you get something, um, a, a good functional expense for the business, yes, but only for the purpose that you can detect it, no. Uh, let's say that, uh, for example, we're going to talk about the self-employment taxes uh, later on, that is 15%. 15 so if you spend a hundred bucks, let's say, you know what, I'm going to just buy that um, extra, extra cartridge because it's, it's tax deductible. Are going to buy something because it is tax deductible. You're only saving 15 bucks, $15, okay? 
Why? Because the tax rate, it is 15%. So if you make an expense of $100, you are actually saving $15 in, uh, in taxes. So if you turn around the equation of the, of the taxes, it really makes um, makes a click, you know, had that emotional factor in there. Hmm. Math doesn't lie. I'm I'm gonna spend a hundred bucks uh, to save fifteen. No, that doesn't make sense. So that hundred bucks has to provide me additional value into my business. So it is worth spending that hundred dollars. Okay, not because it's just tax stuff. Um. Let me see. Expenses. Uh, this is another update. Um, before January, no, December 27th, I think it was. So the all the PP, you cannot deduct expenses that were paid with PPP or EIDL money. That was before, okay? That changed. So yes, you can deduct it. So it, it, that, that was a wonderful thing that, that, that passed uh, because um, some, some business owners were looking, already looking at, uh, at an income. Imagine that you cannot deduct the expenses that, uh, that, um, that, that were paid with uh, PPP funds. So you were actually you know, making profit, even though you did not make a profit. <laughs> so uh, that, that was kind of a scary thing for this upcoming season, tax season, but uh, that changed. So you can actually deduct the PPP, uh, the expenses that were paid with uh, PPP money EIDL. So it doesn't matter. All the expenses are deductible uh, if you use that um, those funds. So let's see if I can pull poll number two. Uh, where's my thing is polls. Oh, relaunch. Let's do poll number two. Launch polling. So do you know how much is your business net income for your bit for, for 2020? Okay. Um, we're not tracking. Who's gonna answer yes or no? So is this more like a, so you think a little bit? Of course I do, no, but my bookkeeper does. I'm working on it. No, but I guess I better find out, uh, especially uh, for these taxes, okay? So we have a pre-split uh, pre uh, answers. You know, we got some people that are working on it, some people that are thinking about starting that process and some of you already know, perfect. Uh, that's, 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 that's good uh, because we're gonna talk about taxes and it's really, really important for you to keep track and know where you are standing, you know, and your net profit, it's, it's a key, it's a key factor here. Let me see, I can uh, just close this poll. You are not getting continuing education credits. This is just so we can have more interaction, okay? And polling. Okay, okay. So let's, <clears throat> let's keep going. So let's talk about the federal level. Um, we're not going to cover, if you're in California and in other states, we're not going to cover state taxes in this particular class because we live in Nevada. We don't have state taxes. Yeah. So uh, three main taxes for business owners that should be aware of. FICA taxes. Okay. We're going to talk about the tax rates now. FICA. It's basically 15.3%. This is related to your social security and Medicare taxes and applies to net income very important that's what we the, the last poll was about net income because if you had a net income a profit 
in your tax, in, in your business, this rate will apply based on your tax structure. Uh, individual federal income taxes. This is after, um, for your personal taxes. As you know, we have a progressive table that goes from zero to 37% and applies to taxable income after personal deductions. So the other tax that you should know is about the income taxes for corporate, 21% applies to net corporate income as well. Okay, so since there are many type of tax structures, I just wanna give you the three main ones. And now that you know about these three, we're gonna see if it applies to you or not, okay? So if you ever wonder about uh, company taxes, this is 21%. If you ever wonder about what other taxes might apply, think, keep that in mind, 15.3% for FICA and the federal income taxes that are from zero to 37%, okay? So let's play with three, with, with uh, these three uh, numbers. Okay. First, in order to understand taxes and your business, we have to know who is getting taxed. You know, how are, how's your business getting taxed? Okay, the money's rolling in, but uh, who, has, who has to pay taxes? Um, and you have to figure out how is your business structure for tax purposes? And we're gonna cover these four basic, the most common ones here. So proprietorship, partnership, corporation and S corporation. You have to be one of these, okay? Um, definitely. So you have to figure out which are the rules that apply to your business regarding taxes, okay? So sole proprietor, partnership, corporation, and S corp. Let's find out sole proprietorships. It's basically a person can be with a spouse that owns an incorporated business. Incorporated business, what is it? it? Did you not open a corporation, okay? I'm not talking about LLCs, I'm, I'm talking about corporations, okay? If you did not go to the Secretary of State and open a corporation, you probably are a sole proprietorship. With you and your spouse working on the business here in Nevada, you are considered a sole proprietorship. As soon as there's an intention to make money, you open a business, you have a sole proprietorship. The IRS, it's uh, um, basically says, there's the intent to make money, you have a sole proprietor. You can operate under a DBA, a doing business as, and get your own EIN number, it's your employer number. So as a sole proprietor, you can go to the Clark County um, division and said, hey, I wanna open my business that is called Juan Taxes. And you go to the IRS and get your EIN number so you don't have to share your social security number with everybody. There's no legal separation between you and your business. They are the same. Uh, when, when tax season comes, you're gonna have to report all this business activity, all your income and expenses in a Schedule C form, okay? And uh, that's gonna be included with your personal taxes. That's something um, confusing for some people. If you have a sole proprietor, don't spend, don't expect to do a separate tax return. You're gonna have a compiled tax return where one form is gonna tell you about your business that's gonna flow into your personal tax return. Uh, subject to FICA taxes and federal income taxes. This is where the taxes come in. Remember the FICA taxes, 15.3% and the federal income taxes, this is where it applies. Sole proprietorships are not subject to the corporate taxes, 21%. So if you have a sole proprietorship, if you have identified yourself as a sole proprietor, you have to pay attention to the FICA taxes and the federal income taxes, okay? 15.3% on your net income. 
must keep good records and make estimated taxes. Estimated taxes um, are kind of, uh, they were funny this year because really uh, there were some people making money and people don't. So as soon as you keep, if you have a net income, you should be making your estimated taxes to the IRS. There was some uh, rules this year about postponing the estimated taxes, but uh, in regular times, <laughs> under normal circumstances, uh, circumstances, you should apply your estimated taxes throughout the year. All business assets and liabilities and income are treated as belonging directly to the business owner. You might have a DBA, you might have a separate bank account for your business, but all the income and liabilities belongs to the business owner. Okay. Um, partnerships. It is very similar to sole proprietor. It is when two or more individuals join to do business. It is it's kind of as two sole proprietors joining forces and they become a partnership. The business and owners are legally the same. The difference is that uh, here you have to do a separate tax return, which is a form 1065. What happens is the partnership will bring all the income will bring all the expenses and whatever we have a net income or a loss it's gonna create a form it's called the k1 that is gonna summarize that's gonna tell you you had an income you have a profit or you have a loss and that number is gonna flow to your personal tax return okay so for partnerships yes there's a separate tax return that it will issue a K-1, which will provide you the information to include in your personal tax return. But taxes, each partner is gonna be subject to FICA and federal income taxes, depending on the profit, depending on the K-1 information. If that K-1 shows that you made a profit, you're gonna pay FICA taxes and federal taxes on your personal tax, tax return. If there was a loss, it's gonna decrease your other income uh, and in your, in your personal tax return. Very important, if you have a partnership, if you have just realized that uh, you have a partnership in your business, do not make W-2s, okay? In partnerships, you are not supposed to give W-2s to the owners. You can pay W-2s to the other employees, if you have other employees, but owners of the partnership are not supposed to be on W-2. The same as sole proprietorships. Uh, if you have a sole proprietorship, don't make a W-2 for yourself. You are overpaying taxes that way, okay? So partnerships and sole proprietor do not issue W-2s from the business uh, to, to, to the owners. And both are subject to the FICA taxes, 15.3% on federal income taxes based on the net income. Again, good record bookkeeping. Um, this is kind of an interesting point about sole proprietors and partnerships. Because even though Let's say that uh, the sole proprietor or the, or the partnership make $100,000, okay? But there was uh, 60 in expenses, okay? So your net profit was 40. In the case of the sole proprietorship, $40 is gonna be taxed to FICA and federal income taxes, okay? But uh, you might go and tell your accountant, you, the tax return that you are showing me is saying that I made $40,000 in net income and I'm paying taxes for that. Why, if I only took 
20,000 and the other 20 were left in the bank account of the business. I never touched it. I didn't put my hands on it. I'm saving them for the crazy year that is coming. And it's basically that way. Even though the money that did not reach <laughs> the pockets of the owners, it's still in the bank account, on, in the business bank account. The business owners, in the same case of a partnership or a sole proprietor, they have to pay taxes on the net income of the business, okay? In, in my example, if there was uh, the $40,000 profit and uh, it was a partnership, two people, uh, two individuals, one gets 20, per, uh, sorry, one gets 10 and the other gets 10. But they never took any money out of the business because they are reinvesting all the money. Still, they have to pay taxes on that particular money and they have to pay FICA taxes 15.3 percent and then federal taxes on that so this is where you have to understand how the taxable amount and the tax rate applied to yourself to your business because otherwise it can create a, a not very good situation where you don't have the money in your pockets but you have to pay taxes and um but that is predictable. So that's why you are here, okay? Uh, understanding and getting a grasp of, of all this. Uh, okay, that was Reina's comment. Okay, good. Let's do corporations. Corporations, I think, are more simple than um, the partnerships and sole proprietors. Um, because basically- I, did, did you answer the Q&A uh, question? I'm sorry. Uh, about Cheryl, I just don't know what to include since I got money before my LLC. Okay. Oh no, I didn't. Thank you, Raina. Okay. okay. Um, sorry, Cheryl. <laughs> sorry. So, <laughs> Cheryl, who got the money? Okay, it's like uh, the LLC was not born before he got that money. So, the proper way to do it is just do your LLC income and then on your uh, if you if you were not incorporated i assume just gonna have um a separate form a schedule c as a sole proprietorship with that particular amount of income it's gonna be the same result it's gonna be the same um tax computation but it's gonna have just two places the before LLC and the after the LLC, because you have to see who got the money. That's very, very important. Um, she's, she says okay. she's a single. She says that she's a single member LLC. Yes. So basically, um, in your in your tax return, might be two 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 schedule C's. One is going to be for your LLC, and we're going to talk about LLCs in a little bit, but it's going to be basically two forms of the business, one that belongs to the LLC with the EIN number and one that belongs to you. And uh, that, that would be the proper way to do that. Um, and I had um, uh, yesterday uh, uh, a client called and uh, they said um, the, the father opened a, a car wash business and the daughter help out opening up the credit card uh, merchant account, but uh, she put her social uh, instead of the EIN of the, of the father, you know, because she didn't know better, but uh, she was trying to help the father. The father was not very technically savvy, so she went ahead and do it, but that created a conflict because now they are, the, the credit card company um, put her social as getting the money, even though all the money went into the business account of the father. But uh, the IRS uh, sent them a letter saying, you know what, we have records that you got the money. Um, if you if you got the money, you have to pay taxes. Uh, but she had to explain that uh, the, the actual father is the one that got the money in the business. She never touched the money. 
she was just trying to help him out. So the credit card company had to um, amend the reports that were sent to IRS. So the IRS had the proper information and everything was, was settled. But uh, it really depends. You have to follow the money and um, um, record it as, as that, who got the money. So corporations, corporations have to be uh, created at the Nevada Secretary of State, filing the Articles of Incorporation. They provide the birth certificate, I wanna say, the Articles of Incorporation. Hey, here's your company. Uh, there are renewal uh, fees. You have to do follow some internal requirements, you know, bylaws, uh, stocks, and recording all minutes and meetings. But uh, the most important thing that you have for tax purposes is that you have to get your EIN with IRS and you file the form 1120 if you have a corporation, okay? And the net income is gonna be subject to the corporate income taxes of 21%. In this particular case, we are not touching the FICA taxes. We are not talking about the federal income taxes. It's going to be applicable to 21% on the corporation uh, based on the net income of the corporation. Has nothing to do with the owners so far. Uh, all the money and taxes are in the, in the corporation side. Then if you want money <laughs> from your corporation, you should, uh, you should get some dividends. Uh, that are gonna get taxed on your personal level. Some people call this the double taxation problem. Uh, it can become a problem if you don't plan accordingly, but uh, there's some flexibility. Uh, believe it or not, uh, the personal income taxes go up to what, 37%. So sometimes uh, it is good to get taxed at 21 <laughs> if you are at that high tax bracket. So. It depends on the type of business, the type of um, of tax plan that they have, but uh, there's also some flexibility. They exist because there's a reason. In some situations, they will uh, they help. Now, S corporation, the famous S corporation. Everybody, it's trying to get one. It looks like it. This corporation is uh, created. Um, you can. There are two ways to get on basically an S corporation. You can go and create a corporation at the state level. And uh, then you have to file the form 2553. This is basically saying, um, hey, IRS, I got a corporation in Nevada, but I want to pay taxes on, as an S corp. And we're going to see the reasons why. So here's my form 2553 change my tax structure. You're not changing the corporation itself, it's just changing the tax structure, okay? Because uh, once you open the corporation, you must follow the Nevada requirements for the corporation. Nevada, federal level, completely different things, different uh, requirements. So the S corporation, it's a mixture of a sole proprietorship and a corporation. Why? Because it has to file its own taxes, like a corporation, an 1120S, but it will issue a K-1, like the partnership, for each owner with information about income, net profits, or, or, or losses. So, I'm, I'm gonna show you a figure, but the most important thing to remember here is that the pass-through income, the, the net income that goes into the personal taxes is not subject to FICA taxes. This is the big difference. And this is uh, one of the most important uh, points that um, out there, why to open an S corporation. There are many other, you know, requirements, but um, this is kind of the selling point of the S Corps uh, <clears throat> right now. So one important point is that all 
members or shareholders of a DAB of an S Corp have to receive a reasonable wage from the S Corporation. Okay. It's a rule from the IRS. Of course, bookkeeping and uh, proper planning. But I want to show you how this flows because I'm pretty sure uh, this might be a little complicated. Okay, here we go. Shareholders uh, pay personal taxes on the income from the business, even though the money remains on the business account. We saw that on the sole proprietorship. That is the same scenario. But here's how the money flows. So if you got an escort, you got some income, of course, and you got some expenses. Inside these expenses, it is mandatory that you, that all shareholders have a W-2 showing reasonable salary. If reasonable salary, it will vary from industry to industry, okay? So um, in that W-2, like any other W-2, you're going to pay FICA taxes and federal taxes, like any other W-2, like any other employee, okay? But after the expenses, we have a profit. From this profit, it's going to flow in the form K-1 to the shareholder. But the big difference is that no FICA taxes are going to applicable to that net profit. In the sole proprietorship, all the net profit flow to the shareholder, everything subject to FICA and federal taxes. But in the case on the S Corp, the profit flows to the K-1, but there's no FICA taxes, only federal taxes. Why? Um, uh, this is not a you know, like a big secret. And IRS is not just handling um, a bonus. It's helping, but it's not just free money for all, okay? Why? Because IRS rules basically, okay, we understand there's not gonna be no FICA taxes on this. Also, no FICA taxes means no social security, no Medicare taxes, no FICA, no social, no social security credits as well, okay? So keep that in mind. FICA taxes are for accumulating credits for down the road for social security and Medicare. If you're planning to have that in your future, you should pay credits into it, okay? It's not gonna happen just like that. So. If the IRS sees, okay, there's a reasonable salary, you are paying, you are, you are paying enough FICA and federal taxes on this side, okay, no problem. You can have the benefits of the S corp and not pay FICA taxes on the profits. If you don't have a profit, if you don't have a profit, it's a loss, which there's no, there's no taxes uh, on, on losses. But uh, you have to report that loss. I mean, the, the, the loss is going to flow to your income taxes, your personal taxes, and is going to reduce your other income. If you had another job, you made 50000 but your S corporation had a net loss of 10000 okay, now you have only 40000 on your personal side. That's going to be, that's going to, get computed okay so um, hopefully i can answer that laura chavez question oh uh, juan did you answer this question cheryl again it says so does single member llc use a schedule c she's confused um, and the and a q a yeah. um, question what about llc's cheryl we're with you we're following your thoughts okay we're that good so irs does not have separate rules to tax LLCs. LLCs are created at the state level. There are a creation of the states, has nothing to do with IRS uh, code. So what happens if you have an LLC? 
basically the IRS says, you know what? You have to, you have to fit in one of those, okay? <laughs> we don't have separate code for LLCs. So if you open an LLC, you have to know what's going on on that LLC and you're gonna fall in one of those, in one of those, those fours. So if your LLC has one member, it is a sole proprietorship. It's gonna go into Schedule C. If the LLC has two members, husband and a wife, in Nevada, you still have the option to file as a sole proprietorship, Schedule C. In, in that particular case where you had a business that, um, um, that then transferred to an LLC, so you have a sole proprietorship because there was one member, I'm sorry, sole proprietorship because it was the business owner itself, Schedule C. And then and the LLC was created, a completely different entity was created, a completely different license, number, EIN, but the LLC is also one single member. So it's gonna go into another Schedule C, okay? In that particular case, you're gonna have file two Schedule Cs one is going to have the EIN of your LLC and one is going to be uh, under your, your, your social if you didn't get a personal EIN, okay? But um, it, it is based on who got the money. Uh, the LLC was not created, was not alive before that. So it's going to be two Schedule Cs. You can have as many Schedule Cs as you, as you need to. It depends on your industry. They are industry driven as well. So if you have, uh, if you are... Um, you know, um, designing websites and also driving Uber, you're going to have two Schedule Cs as well, okay? So if you have an LLC with two members that are not related, they are just partners, shareholders, you know, you're going to have a partnership. If you have an LLC and file the S Corp, form, which is the 2553, this is filed with IRS, your LLC is going to get taxed as an S-Corp. If you file an LLC and you tell IRS in the form 8832 that you want to get taxed as a corporation, your LLC gets taxed as a corporation. So the LLC depends in what form, what are the, what's going on inside, who are the members, how it was formed, it will fall under this four categories. Okay, these the, the main four categories. Okay, um, so this is very uh, important to distinguish because some some persons, uh, some businesses open an LLC this year. Um, they say, okay. I have an LLC, how do I pay taxes? We don't know, we have to figure it out. I mean, you have to figure it out. You have to know, you have to understand how are you paying taxes? Is your LLC paying as a sole proprietor, partnership, S-corp or, or corporation? So just to give you an, a, an, an example, uh, let's say that um, you open a sole proprietorship and you start business, things are doing well, and uh, it looks like uh, you are getting big. Uh, you wanna um, you wanna make sure your you are not liable. You wanna basically separate your business activity from your sole proprietorship. You go and create an LLC based on the advice of a lawyer. Okay, so now you had a sole proprietorship converted to a single member LLC. Did anything change on your taxes? No, nothing. Because even though you became an LLC, you're still at, you are still taxed as a sole proprietorship. So the entity changed. There's a new business in town. There's a, you have protection and all those um, requirements from the lawyer, but on your taxes, it not, nothing changed. You're paying the same way as uh, uh, because you are paying so as a sole proprietor 
uh, as well. So that same LLC then uh, in a particular year decides that it is better to start paying taxes as, a, as an S-Corp. So that same LLC can file that 2553 and start getting tax as an S-Corp. So I just wanna give you this example because the same sole proprietor started an LLC, was taxed as a sole proprietor, but now is taxed as an S corporation. And uh, it just it just changed the way uh, the, the LLC didn't change. It just, uh, it just changed the way it is getting taxed. Farther down the road, the LLC decides you wanna go, I'm gonna go public. I'm gonna go and open my own IPO franchises all over the world. But uh, S corporations are gonna have, is limited to a hundred members. I need more shareholders. So I'm gonna go and change it to a corporation. File the ADA 32 and boom, you have a corporation. Okay, so uh, it is very um, interesting how the same entity can get taxed differently throughout its life, depending on, on the requirements, okay? This is a little summary. Um, for example, how is your how your business is taxed? It really it affects how you are getting paid. Okay. So if you have a sole proprietorship, basically you can withdraw money anytime. Um, you're gonna get you're gonna get tax on whatever net income it is. The pay. It doesn't matter if it's in your own pocket or the or the business account. So owners draw are the way you're getting paid as a business owner. You don't do a W-2, you don't do a 1099. If you have employees, yes, you give them W-2s. If you have independent contractors, you, yes, you give them 1099s, but has nothing to do with uh, how you are getting paid as an owner. Partnerships, you get distributions. It's basically owner's draw, same kind of the same thing as the sole proprietorship. And at the end of the year, you're getting your K-1 um, that shows your net income. Corporations, the money goes into a corporation. If you wanna get that money, basically you're getting it as a salary or, or dividends. If you have an S-Corp, um, it is kind of a mix. You have to do a W-2 and you are also getting distributions or, or, or owner's draw uh, from, from, from the money because you're getting tax in the net income as well uh, at the end. So uh, it really doesn't matter if you take the money, the, the owner's draw are not deductible as an expense. So it will count towards your net income at the end of the year. Um, this is a crash course about entities and taxes. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, uh, how does a single member LLC and use the schedule C? I'm confused. Okay, uh, Cheryl, I think uh, I, I answered that question. Um, let me know if I if I have to explain a little bit more. Um, we are good with the with the chat right now, right? Let's do a poll so I can catch Yes, we're up. good. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. So just as a um, quick summary here. Uh, are you going to send uh, the slides later on, Juan? Yes, we can send the slides. Um, we're going, um, Raina's going to put our email address there and um, in the chat and we can send you the slides as well. Also, uh, if, if just to let you know, if you need to leave early uh, because you have other things to do, we're gonna put this class on demand. Um, we'll send you an email when the, when you can replay it. Perfect. So um, what uh, uh, business tax structures are you? So we have some uh, escorts. Great, don't forget your mandatory your reasonable compensation. 
uh, sole proprietorships, great. Prepare that uh, net income so you don't get any surprises about FICA taxes. Uh, we have some uh, people on the LLC question mark. So that was one of the, of the purposes of this class. If you have an LLC, you have to figure out where you are at, how you are getting taxed. So let me know if you have uh, more questions about that because an LLC, if you tell me, if you come to, to, if you go to your tax return, preparing, I have an LLC. That's not enough information. There's no tax rules about LLCs. You have to figure it out if you are getting taxed as a sole proprietorship, a partnership, an S corp, or a corporation. Otherwise, you don't. You cannot do your taxes. Okay, is that is that simple? <laughs> you have to know where you at, so we can uh, we can figure out if FICA taxes or or federal taxes or corporate taxes are applicable to you. Okay. So thank you, thank you. Um, let's see. So poll three, independent contractors and employees. We're gonna, we're gonna um, cover this real, this material quick, but it's very important. I know that uh, the business environment is not the, the best right now but you have to know, you have to properly classify your help, okay? So it you do not decide if you have an employee or independent contractor, I'm sorry. I mean, there are rules that define that relationship. Uh, it, it is not, um, it is not up to you to decide what happens. You know, the, the burden of proof rests on the employer to demonstrate the existence of the relationship, okay? If you make somebody sign a contract saying that they are independent contractor, but you do not pass this criteria, that contract will not protect you. You will be at fault. So this is the, 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 basic, um, the basic rules about in, uh, independent contractor criteria. The person has been and will continue to be free from control and direction over the performance of the services, both under his contract of service and the service is either outside the usual course of business for which the service is performed or what the server blah, blah, blah. Okay, you can read this. But then in, in summary, it says, you cannot have control over the work that is performed. So if you hire your, if you have a restaurant and uh, you hire um, a, um, your niece as a waitress, for example, um, you have control. I know she's a family member. I know she's gonna be for just a few days, three, four days helping out. But you have control over how she does things. You tell her what to do, give them hours. She's an employee. She's definitely an employee. If you have a, a landscaping, a landscaping business, and you have um, somebody helping out in a project you might have a temporary employee. Why? Because the service he's providing is not different from the service that you provide. It is adding to the service that you are providing. So basically it is a component of your own service. You guys are in the same industry. Um, you, do, you are controlling, you are providing the tools, you are providing the supplies, everything. So it is not gonna be considered an independent contractor. It is actually an employee. And uh, on number three, it says that the service is performed in the course of an independently established trade occupation or profession. So basically that particular help or, or, or contractor has to be in a different industry. If you have a restaurant and you hire uh, somebody to clean up the, the restaurant, you know, every two weeks 
or no, not every two weeks, sorry, every 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 single day at the end of the of the shift. Um, that's not a good restaurant. Um, that's an independent contractor. Is it a different industry? You are not controlling the work. Of course, you're gonna double check that they do their job, but that's not how they control uh, the how the work is performed. It's just the quality of the work. Okay, so it is very very important. Uh, the Department of Employment in Nevada is looking into this, um, and it will make you pay penalties if you do not properly classify. And this is also at the IRS level. The IRS follows kind of the same criteria and it will charge you back FICA taxes and Medicare taxes for your employee if you do not properly classify them. So here are some important dates. Independent contractors. If you had independent contractors, you should ask for a W-9 and a copy of their ID. That's the first thing you do after, before cutting a check, okay? W-9 and copy ID. Calculate the total payments for the year. If they are more than $600, this year you're gonna have to prepare a 1099 NEC. This is a new form that is due by January 31st, okay? Then you have to send the 1096 as well by January 31st. 1096 is basically the IRS form uh, giving you the total of independent contractors. So it's going to be the sum up of all the 1099 NECs that, um, that you issue. Keeping compliance, avoid penalties. They might charge you interest for not fully uh, filing those forms. For employees, before you hire somebody, have the W-4, I-9, copy of Social Security, and ID. Um, requested, you know, um, they have to file this, uh, keep them in a, in a separate record for your employee records. If you have an employee, uh, you have to make the tax deposits every 15th of the following month that you make the payments. So if you pay them on December, you have to make the deposits of the money that you took from them that you would hold on the 15th of January uh, through EFTPS. At the, at the end of every quarter, you have to file uh, the form 941. It's gonna include just the, the, the summary of all the tax deposits and the salaries that you paid. And at the end of the year, you have to file the W-2 and W-3 by January 31st as well as the 940. This is just a checklist uh, that I want you to use. You know, uh, Make sure that you put this on your calendar. Make sure that uh, if it's applicable, you can talk to your bookkeeper, your accountant, your whoever helps you file these forms. And um, we, uh, you, you, can, you can make sure you're, you're not subject to penalties. Nevada taxes to employees. If you have employees in Nevada, uh, this is the modified business tax form. It's basically, it's based on the wages that you paid. So it really, um, oh, sorry. Let's talk about workers' compensation. If you have employees in Nevada, you have to have workers' compensation. Before you hire somebody, you have to go and talk to your insurance person and tell them, hey, you know what I'm thinking about? Um, hiring employees, so please uh, give me a quote for workers' compensation. Then the modified tax is going to be due every single quarter. Um, is based on your salaries that you paid, but include this this cost of 1.475 in your in your business plan uh, because it's going to be due once you have employees. The purpose of this. Um, summary is just so you are aware of these taxes, okay? Because unemployment insurance, as well as modified taxes, they are a little bit of taxes here and there. I mean, the modified tax was 1.4. Uh, the, the unemployment insurance is about 2.9 based on your salaries. So include this on your projections. It's not just salaries, the expense. It's gonna be workers' comp, it's gonna be unemployment insurance, it's gonna be uh, modified taxes. So 
they will add up a little bit. Uh, the SEP is also 0.05%. So if you add up those, you're looking at about another 3.5 between the modified, the unemployment insurance and the SEP. So you have to add up 3.5% more on top of your, on your, on your payroll cost. If you are selling stuff in Nevada, sales tax, you have to register. Don't worry, it's not, everything is done online now. You don't have to go and take the forms. The sales tax uh, department have a wonderful website. It is very practical where you can just um, register and file your, your taxes. So it is the taxable amount based on sales. Do not include services. So for example, a client that has a beauty salon, uh, the service of cutting hairs, washing hairs, it is not subject to sales tax, but she has to report sales tax because of the sale of products, uh, shampoos and conditioners and the other wonderful products that they have. So uh, usually it is quarterly, um, but it can change to monthly depending on your sales. Do this online. Do not um, mess around with the book, with the forms, with the mails. Everything is online now. The use tax report, this is for the counterpart of the sales tax. Basically, if you have use tax, it's something that you buy outside the Nevada and um, you have to come up with the sales tax for that part. Action plan. We try to um, keep these things um, interactive, but uh, all this knowledge is gonna die if you don't put action into it, okay? So taxes are based on rules and formulas, therefore are predictable. We wanna, wanna we want to invite you to schedule time to understand and organize your taxes. Make time, I know you put, clients on your calendar. I know that you put a Facebook post on product design and things like that on your calendar, but you have to include also in your calendar uh, time to mark the important tax dates so you can avoid penalties. And if you delegate taxes to your bookkeeper and uh, your accountant and things like that, do not lose control. Okay. Because at the end of the, at the end of the, at the day, basically is um, it is your responsibility to 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 file these forms and uh, you're gonna be liable for anything that happens. So we have the right not to pay more than we should in taxes, but we need to get organized. Uh, organization and information is gonna be really, really key this particular year. So if you're paying taxes, remember it's because you're making money. So don't, Try to change your um, your perception about taxes. This is something that is predictable. It's just the cost of doing businesses. And I think we have a, a question. Uh, do you have uh, do you have to have workers' compensation insurance if all the employees work remotely? I think you do. Um, Yes, you have to pay probably sales tax in, in other states as well. Um, and, and Amazon does that. If you go, if you buy something in Amazon, it will just include your sales tax of your particular state. Uh, there are new federal rules that you have to, you have to basically do that. Every state will have these different rules about uh, online. I think they, they have different like um, different um, set amounts. So, um, but if you use certain platforms, they can help you with that already. If you are doing the sales on your own, you might have to invest some time in, uh, in, look, in, in looking like a, a, a national resource, how to facilitate. I know there are platforms like that that help you uh, file sales taxes uh, all around uh, the US. So just some do research, but yes, you definitely have to collect sales taxes. 
Um, do you have to have workers' compensation insurance for all employees work remotely? You know what? That's a more like a um, state compliance um, uh, because Nevada, it is mandatory. If you have employees, you have uh, you have to pay workers' compensation. I, I, I think there are two ways we can confirm this. First, with your insurance person uh, about the workers' compensation. Uh, the person that is already providing the workers' comp insurance. And also we have a contact with the co workers' compensation uh, department here in, in Nevada. If you can send us an email, we can double check that for you, okay? Uh, but uh, definitely the Nevada is gonna just answer you regarding the Nevada side. So maybe your insurance might have a little bit of uh, more understanding about other. But uh, the, uh, or um, or or sometimes it's um, it's time to to change your workers' compensation something that is more national. Okay, uh, that's my my our email addresses. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry that we went over. Uh, th uh, we have a lot other of questions. Okay. Uh, we have other questions um, in the Q and A. Um, oh, okay. Yes. Q&A, uh, do you have any resources finding a tax person that is local, trusted, and not high price for those of us who didn't make much due to the crazy year of being shut down? Um, there's, um, okay, first, you have to understand uh, the, um, the areas of expertise. Uh, there are wonderful tax preparers out there. There are some you know, very good ones out there as well. Uh, I seen good work and I seen horrible work, but um, um, there are certain distinctions. For, for example, CPAs, they might be in a little bit of a, you know, expensive side. Uh, enrolled agents, I am an enrolled agent, enrolled agents, uh, we have to pass um, IRS certifications and a lot of continuing educations every year. So enrolled agents are a good source. There's the, uh, if you type uh, enrolled agents in any Google Maps, it will probably pop up. Um, then um, some uh, try to ask other friends that have business, okay? Um, they can maybe provide you with some, uh, with some suggestions, but, um, for example, um, when, when I do my, when, when I was doing the, the practice, the best referral is some, the experience of somebody else, okay? So I'm pretty sure you know other, um, you have friends that have their own businesses or you can have uh, participate on networking uh, events that definitely can provide you. But a search enrolled agents EA enrolled agents and, and the Google Maps, and you're probably gonna get uh, good uh, good options. Then, uh, what is the 1099 neck? Okay, sorry about that. Um, 1099 neck. It's the new 1099 miscellaneous. So we used last year all independent contractors uh, got the 1099 miscellaneous. We were used to that for many years, now they change. If you are an independent contractor, you're not gonna get your 1099 miscellaneous, you're gonna get a 1099 N, uh, uh, NEC, I call it NEC uh, or NIC. But um, this 1099 is the new form that you have to file for your independent contractors. So, so if you provided services for other companies, for example, if you did some Uber or you did some um, online, uh, you know, marketing, and uh, you used to get a 1099 miscellaneous, you're gonna get this form. It is the same information. It's gonna get taxed the same. It's just a different form that the IRS is gonna use to better track. Um, Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Thanks, everybody.